getting ready to start this day off. Check this out. Now that's a that's a layout for breakfast if you ask me. And I'm gonna dig in and then I'm gonna get back with y'all in just a little bit when I get back to the trail. But I'm gonna feast on this first. I'm not the only one, but I could probably eat it all. There goes Jen number one. She might be Jen number two, I'm not sure. They're both named Jen. But remember that uh, thing number one and thing number two from the cat in the hat? <laughs> uh, that place was outstanding, y'all. If you're ever up here hiking or doing anything, just go there and spend the night. Um, they really know how to take care of their, their uh, guests. Uh, so excellent. That breakfast was out of this world, let me tell you. So I think it's day 64 today. Um, no, it's day 65. I'm pretty sure it's day 65. June 7th is what they tell me. And uh, it's time to go to Rangeley. We got to climb up to Betty Crocker Mountain here and uh, get up there to the top and then over the to the other side. And we're going to camp at a spot where we where we camped uh, last year, um, uh, Mushroom and I, uh, with uh, the Vintage Hikers and Irish and Rerun. It was funny because uh, one side of the, the campsite was uh, uh, the retirees or the, the older folks, and the other side was the young ones. <laughs> it was kind of kind of interesting. But I'm hoping to get there today. But not. There's a shelter just before it that I'll that I'll try to get to. Uh, still cold. Still possible for rain. It started raining right when we got here, but it quit. So I'm hoping that it stays that way. I'm gonna get in these woods, and that'll probably keep me protected. But uh, at any rate, I feel good today, and I'm ready to hike. So uh, I'm gonna get hiking. Y'all take care, and I'll be back with you in a little bit. Bye-bye. And good morning, Mushroom. <laughs> Got about two miles before I'm up to the top of Betty Crocker North Peak. It's not been a bad climb so far. About a little more than halfway done. And uh, by main standards, it's been a nice, gentle, easy uphill with minimal obstacles in my way. Until now, as you can see. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I decided to get my umbrella out today. It's just kind of spitting. Every once in a while, it'll get some rain, and then it'll stop, and it's just kind of falling all the trees. But I thought I'd just try and manage this, at least going up. I'm probably going to put it away when I go down, because that becomes much more difficult, I'm sure. But I thought I'd give it a try. You know, Hawk and I were talking one time, and he's like, you know, the difference between using an umbrella and not using an umbrella is... Being wet with the umbrella or being soaked without it. And you know, and that's probably true. The other day, yesterday I guess it was, was it yesterday? No, the day before yesterday. Uh, I was soaked. Wasn't using my umbrella and I was just completely soaked. Now granted, it hasn't been raining like it was yesterday, the other day, today, so. But, I'm relatively dry under this thing. And uh, gonna try and stay that way as much as I can tonight today so I don't have as many issues and problems at the end of the day hopefully as far as the hostel stay is concerned I think I already said this but I'll say it again that was a great hostel stay one of the things I try to do when I go to hostel is I take try to take my leave no trace principles with me into the hostel and uh, just try to leave that place as clean or cleaner as when I got there and uh and that's kind of how you have to do it at the hostel i mean if you're going to be sloppy at the hostel you're going to get <laughs> you're going to get some nasty looks or even a, a retribution from <laughs> a hostel owner sometimes if they don't like the way you're acting and that's true you know you got a bunch of people in there a bunch of dirty hikers and by the way we don't want to be dirty we want to get clean when we get there, but the fact is, is that we are dirty. And we should be cleaning up our own dirt, not everybody else's dirt, if you ask me. That's a pink hot dog philosophy. Pink hot dog's corner for the day. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna keep on climbing here. Look like a little sun kind of trying to come out on me right now. When I get up to the north, Betty Crocker Mountain, then I dip down, and then I hit the South Betty Crocker, and then woo, and then we'll head downtown for a while before we climb back up to Spalding Mountain. Of course, it'd be great if there was a mountain named Wilson, because you know Tom Hanks 
his dentist name was Dr. Spaulding, but his best friend on the island was Wilson. All right, I'm about to get on up and get on out of here. So y'all hang tight and I'll let you know what I see when I get up there. Probably nothing, but I'll prove it to you that I'm up there. I'm gonna put this away so I can get around this. Made it. North Cracker Mountain, 4168. Maine does like to make the signs for the uh, for the uh, summit. So does New Hampshire. Well, I'm getting reports from Mimi and Wood Booger that there's a lot of haziness for the wildfires uh, in Canada. But I don't see no haziness. All I see are clouds. So maybe the haziness is in the clouds. Well, it is one mile. I think you saw that. One mile to South Cracker Mountain. So just a little down and then a bump up and we're back up on top of another mountain. Uh, it's not raining. It's still in the cloud though. Alrighty, I'm going to get on trucking. Sorry about the money shots or the lack thereof. Alrighty, daddy. I just met um, Jeremy, also known as Sex Panther. Although his uh, his wife doesn't want him to use that trail name. <laughs> you know, if you watch uh, Anchorman, I think there's it's a reference to uh, somebody in that movie there. <laughs> but uh, he's a no-bo flip-flopper. Started in Harpers Ferry on April 8th, making his way up to Katahdin. And uh, he's having a good day, enjoying himself. He's from Michigan as well. He said, as soon as I get done up here, I'm going back to Michigan for the summer. And then I'll go back down south and finish up uh, the fall. And that sounds like a good plan to me. I'd probably do it that way too, if I had a chance. So uh, he's heading into the main roadhouse. You better believe I'm going to give them good reviews all the way down, up and down Maine here until at least I get maybe 30, 40 miles away. I don't want to be in Massachusetts talking about the main roadhouse. <laughs> I could, but I mean... It loses some of its effect, I guess, when you're not really close. So that's cool. It's nice to see people up here because this trail, like I said before, it just feels so isolated up here. I just feel, I feel alone when I'm out here. And it's okay with me. I'm not mad. I'm not uh, bummed about it at all. But when you finally find somebody, uh, it's nice to talk. And they seem to be the same way. They seem to like stop and perk up and say, hey, what's going on? So, uh, we all met. We're doing good. He's heading to Stratton today. I'm heading to Rangeley tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, very good. I'm uh, cruising down downtown for a minute until I get to the coal, as they're called up here. And I will find my way back up to South Betty Crocker Mountain. All right, you guys hang tight and I'll show you when I get there. Here we are at the summit of South Betty Crocker Mountain. No sign though, that might be somewhere else. But that's the view. Yeah, you couldn't see anything anyways because of those wildfires probably. But you can check the Crocker Mountains right off the list of things to do in Maine. Now it's time to go over to Spalding Mountain. That's the next one. And we just gotta keep running through these mountains to get to New Hampshire. Where they got more mountains over there I hear. So uh, let's keep going. No rest for the wicked. You know what I mean? There's a sign. Here's your sign. South Crocker Mountain's a little bit shorter than its cousin, North Crocker Mountain. All right. It's severely downtown now, all the way to Caribou Valley Road. Looks like I've come 6.2 miles today. I still have 11 miles to hike. And it's like almost one o'clock. So I'm not going to be getting done until seven-ish, I believe. Which is fine. I mean, it stays light until almost nine o'clock now. So if I get a late start during the day, i got plenty of time to continue to hike later in the day. I do like getting up early, though, and kind of being done by four or five o'clock. And I'll revert to that trend for sure. We're going to start getting into Nobo land, and we have to kind of compete for places to sleep. A little bit although by the time you get up here with no bows you know it gets a little more spread out and mushroom and i never had any problems last year 
finding places to sleep and stuff. But I don't know how intense it's going to be. Of course, when you're hiking northbound with everybody, you kind of just kind of stay wrapped up with whoever you're hiking with. But if you're hiking like me, I'm hiking against everybody. I could just run into this big giant puddle of people and uh, you end up camping with 30 people in a, in a campsite designed for 10, you know. So, but I don't think I got time for that plan starts to need to be implemented. It's nice having a small crowd at the hostels too. I'm a small crowd kind of guy. I'd rather have just a couple of people to talk to and chat chat with. If I have a lot of people around me, I get a little, a little anxious. So it's nice having a smaller crowd around me to kind of soothe that anxiety. And I like the, you know, more little one-on-one -on -one attention you get to hostel owners and all the people that are working with the hostel. They get so busy trying to take care of everybody. But sometimes people get lost in the fray. So this is another nice way to just kind of have that uh, personal service. All right. Headed on down. Let's see how treacherous this is. Going downtown. It wasn't too bad coming off. I mean, there was certainly some rock climbing, but it wasn't uh, crazy. Oh, shit. Sure. All right. I'm going to get off of this thing. Wow. Look at that, y'all. Crazy. Clouds are lifting a little bit. It isn't much. It looks like there's a logging operation going on on that mountain over there. Check that out. It's either that or that's the AT. It's just getting wider and wider. <laughs> oh, man. You got a little view and a little sunshine poking through over there, too. Very nice money shot. Yep. Maybe I'll have a nice view when I get up over to uh, Spalding and the others. I think you just kind of get up and pop up over that ridge where the, where the uh, um, tree clearing's going on. And then we run around that ridge and top out onto Spalding, which I don't really see it. I don't think it's that range over there. I think that's too far. Because we're only like, I don't know, seven miles. All right, cool. There is a sky, there is a sun. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Look at this. Finally, I get some. Something other than a cloud. So I think I might have been mistaken before. So our trail, I think, is going to run right up through here. And then I think we're going to bump up and down. Eventually, I think we're going over to that mountain range over there, maybe. I don't remember exactly how that's all going to work, but I'm just following the trail. But if you want to know, I believe that's a glacial cirque right there. Back in the day, that glacier would start right there, and then it flowed right down this valley. You can see how nice and long and wide this valley is and then it probably flowed and then took a left turn right down there and then flowed out into that little spot right there there's probably others that joined them around here somewhere too land covered in ice all right coolio all right i'm going to keep hiking it's good to get some views some money shot action for sure. Can y'all hear that sound of rushing water? That's the Carabasset Valley River East Branch, I believe. And it's coming into my memory now that this was a little tricky last year with no water. And right here is another mushroom and pink hot dog campsite. We camped here with Pyro last year. We set up our tent right there in that little spot. Pyro didn't get here until late. She set up right over there. Weird. Now I remember everything. This river sounds a little angry. So I'm wondering what the situation's gonna be. Holy fudge sickles. Nutter butter. Shiznit. Oh my god.
<laughs> There's that board. That board was there last year too. So it must not really get any faster or swifter or deeper than this. This one's gonna be a little tricky. I ain't gonna lie, but it's gotta be done one way or the other. I'm gonna give it a try. I'll let you know what happens when I get on the other side, if I get on the other side. All right, here we go. I think I got two spots. I can go right here, get that rock, but that's gonna be a little challenging. <clears throat> and my feet's gonna get wet one way or the other and then bounce across and then get over the board. Or I could go back over here, try to bounce across, maybe get that rock, get that rock, get that rock, bounce up on them over there. I kind of feel like that might be the, the way to go over there. Because I don't know if I can stretch up and get to that rock with with uh, great confidence, let's just say. I could boom, boom, and get wet, get wet, get wet, boom, boom, boom. Over there, I think I can go boom, boom, Probably get up there, maybe get a little wet, wet, a little wet, and then maybe get up there. It's gonna be a challenge, one way or the other. Okay, I'm sitting on this rock, and I was standing over there on the last clip. I decided to come over here, and get that rock, that rock, that rock, and up there, and I'll be okay. I ain't worried so much about these rocks, I'm worried about that board. This board scared the shit out of me. Sorry about my language. Okay, yeah, that's where I was sitting right there. I made it. I got my toes wet, but that's okay. I don't care. This board right there, though, it makes me real nervous. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl across there. I don't care what I look like. If I fall down or slip, I'm done. I'm going down the rapids. And you can see the water ain't slowing down for me. So here we go. Ta-da! I made it. Whew. That was a little challenging. These always make you a little nervous. You gotta like think them out a little bit and just make sure you're doing the right thing. That board wasn't as slick as I thought it was, but I still crawled across it. I ain't ashamed about it either. Sorry about swearing in there, but sometimes you gotta let one out. All right. All right, I gotta climb up uh, to that Spalding Mountain Ridge now. So that's gonna take me a little while. Today's a slow goer, that's for sure. I haven't got any trail where I can really make any progress with any normal pace, but that's okay. We're getting closer to Harper's Ferry with every step. All right, here we go. Hoo hoo. Nice little money shot as I climb up. There's that river that I crossed earlier, right there. Beautiful. Yeah, let's get back out here. There we go. Beautiful on a rainy day. And I have no idea where I'm at right now. It almost looks like that right back there behind me is the cirque that I was talking about before and that we just went all the way down to that river and then came back up on the same side of the mountain but it makes no sense it almost seems like we would have had to come down over there across the river but the river's right there too so maybe it was on this other side of this ridge where I was coming down and there's another cirque over there I can't really tell I'm lost I know where the trail is It's right there, because there's a white blaze. <laughs> That's the way the trail looks here in Maine. Okay, onward and upward.
<laughs> we had finally made it up to the top of that ridge. You climb up from that river where I'd crossed straight up the mountain for a 1.2. And I bet you it took me over an hour and a half. Maybe an hour and a half. I don't know. It took a long time. Every time I'd look far out, I'd like, oh my God, I think I've gone 0.5. Nope, just point 0.1 or whatever, you know? You just like, jeez. This thing is straight up the mountain. It had a couple of really sketchy spots that I remember from last year with mushroom in it. And we hiked, we were hiking with pyro too during that time too. Crazy. So now I've actually found a little bit of trail where I can pick up my pace a little bit and uh, manage to get going because it's almost 4.30. And I've got two options. Option A is the shelter in about two and a half miles. And then option B is this campsite that we camped at last year down by the waterfall on that old road, which is 5.6. So that makes either a shave off an additional three miles tomorrow or uh, just save that mileage for tomorrow. Let's see what I do. I'm not sure what to do right now. I'm cold, I'm wet. The shelter sounds nice, but getting into town a little earlier tomorrow also sounds nice. I might just wait at the shelter and then kind of Nero on the backside, stay in, in the hotel until they kick me out at 11 and then go back on a trail. The hike from Rangeley isn't too bad. It's just a kind of a gentle uphill climb for quite a while. And I bet you I can make some time uh, to, the next day coming from Rangeley. So, yeah, I'm not in a race or anything, but just trying to be efficient, trying to get back home to Mushroom, y'all. So, it is uh, one of those things where just trying to figure out what to do and what the best plan is. I will say this, I'm leaning towards that shelter. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. All right, I'll be back in a little bit. Spalding Mountain, 150 yards, straight up there. Yeah, I don't think so. Spalding, it's nice to know you, but Pink Hot Dog is cold, wet, and tired, so he's done climbing for the day. <laughs> not bad though got up over this range there's a couple other mountains that have side trails to them that you can climb but there ain't no peak bagger today that's for sure I'm just doing what the trail tells me to do I'm following instructions staying on the white blaze so I've decided that I'm gonna suck it up buttercup and hit that uh, campsite I was talking about it's about I was probably about four miles away, and it's about five o'clock. So, uh, 7.30 is probably the time I'm going to get there. And uh, so I'm going to keep going. And i got to put this away because uh, i got to get down off of this thing. All right. I'll check back in when I get there and uh, give you a, a wrap-up for the rest of the day because I think the rest of the day is just hiking in the, in the cold, rainy weather. All right. I'll see you all in a little bit. One more mountain today. Lone Mountain. And it's lonely because uh, it hardly was a climb at all. I didn't even really feel it. It's just basically, must be a little blip and they must have named it. All right, I just got to go downtown now. One mile to the campsite. I've been making good time on this trail. It uh, has no water, very little rocks, very little roots. And I've been able to walk a good pace. That's pretty cool. I stopped by the shelter up there, the Spalding Mountain Shelter. That's where I was going to stop, but I just stopped by and see if anyone was there. And there were, there was two guys there, two Nobos. One of them I met, he told me I met him uh, just past the Dragon's Tooth, which I don't remember. Of course, it's hard for me to remember these guys sometimes. But So that makes number nine and ten. That's three today. And... Uh, yeah, they were all set up in the in the shelter there. So I am just about home for the night. And I think I'm gonna have enough daylight to get all my stuff done. I believe I'm just gonna set up and get in my bag and just cook in my tent. <laughs> I'm soaked to the bone again, by the way. 
and it hasn't really been raining at all. But in a lot of the trail today, these uh, spruce tree saplings have been so close and I've just been rubbing against them and they're just wet and they just transfer all that moisture to me. So my, my shorts are wet. The sleeves on my rain gear is wet, but I felt my my shirt uh, inside my rain my rain jacket. And inside my rain jacket, at least on my chest, is pretty dry. My sleeves, I'm pretty sure, are wet. But I'm gonna have to figure out a plan to try and dry out uh, tonight. So that's where we're at. Okay, I'm gonna put this away and get down there. I'll wrap it up in just a minute. Well, that's a wrap for day 65, y'all. This is my setup. I thought I was going to uh, Mushroom and Pink Hot Dog campsite last year, but found out just before, uh, right when I got here, I'm like, ah, this doesn't look familiar, and figured out that it's two more miles down the road, and there's no way I was hiking another two miles. So this is where I ended up, right on the side of the trail. The trail's right there, and I uh, found kind of a, a flattish spot to set my tent up and called it a day. <clears throat> it's much warmer down here and the wind is, there's really no wind at all, so that's nice. Compared to that shelter up there when I talked to those fellows, it was pretty chilly and uh, the wind was blowing pretty good. So um, I think I'm going to be pretty happy down here tonight. Uh, I'm still cold, don't get me wrong. It's not like uh, 75 degrees down here, but it's better. I think uh, today was just a shy bit of 17 miles and let me tell you, it was a long day. Started at 9, got done at 7.30, 7.45, um, but I felt good all the way. It was just a slow go. It's just hard to uh, manage rocks, roots, water, uh, climbing, coming down, going up, everything you got to do in Maine uh, just to kind of get, get through your day. I mean, normally down south, I was maybe averaging a couple miles a day, a couple miles an hour, but up here, I think today I averaged about 1.3 or 1.4 miles an hour. Uh, so it was uh, it was kind of slow going. I did have some nice trail towards the end, so I was able to get here a little earlier than I thought I was I was gonna. So that's good. And it leaves me with about 15 miles to get to Rangeley tomorrow. Uh, so I'm looking looking forward to getting down there and uh, once again getting in a hotel, getting in a nice warm bed, uh, soaking wet, drying everything out, rinse and repeat sort of thing. I think this, this weather is going to continue on for another three or four days. So um, this is the way it's going to be for a while uh, here for old pink hot dog. I got 10 through hikers total, three today, um, one earlier in the day and those two fellows in their shelter. So uh, I was glad to stop by. I'm glad I stopped by there uh, because uh, I'd met the one guy. And I, I'm sorry, but I don't remember their names uh, at this point in time. So that's kind of where I'm at. My legs feel real good. Um, I did have a couple of slips today and you know when you slip especially on that on that uh, quadriceps tendon that I had repaired you get a little worried and uh, uh, you load that tendon real fast and uh, sometimes it doesn't like that but it's um, it's holding up solid and, and, and doing pretty good now tomorrow I might have a different story because a lot of times when you when you tweak things like that it takes a, a day for it to to show up but right now I'm, I'm feeling just fine no problems so time to get to bed time to call it a day this is day 65 there's a mosquito on my leg <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna wrap this day up and get in bed and get back up and start hiking tomorrow got the saddlebacks tomorrow of course it's probably not gonna be any views up there there's really pretty pretty views up there last year we got some really nice views but I don't think I'm gonna get any today so uh, tomorrow I mean so that's the way it is uh, just hiking through this uh, main weather. Uh, can't have everything every day. I'm just uh, trudging along and uh, enjoying myself. Actually, uh, I'd rather hike in this in this stuff than than that hot weather I started off in with all those bugs. So I'm happy. All right, y'all, take care. Have a nice night. I'll see you tomorrow. And good night, mushroom. Bye bye.